components of a new world, but also the the inability of society to accept to accept these these uh, uh, new rules. New rules. Um, now, the, how much time do I have? We. Okay. So, so the last thing I want to talk about is how that influences Israel society, and I want to focus on Israeli military. Israeli military, uh, the IDF, Israeli Defense Force, um, is the most re the way Israeli society perceives it, it. This is the institute in Israel that is the most reliable institute, much more than the government, much more than the parliament, much more than, than the High Supreme Court, much more than the president. The IDF is, uh, is the body, the institute in Israel, that Israeli society completely relies on it is sure that, uh, that, uh, that it is safe and it is handled. Uh, um, but it used to have a much more important role in Israeli society than it has today. Um, and there's a, uh, quite a lot of reasons why that happened. Um, but but the, for those of you who, who, who don't know this, it used to be uh, Israel, uh, you have to go to the military when you're 18 years old, whether you're a man or a woman, there's conscription, you, you, you have to, to enlist with the military. Um, it used to be that even if you wanted to be an artist in Israel, if you wanted to be uh, a singer, you'd have to go through the army band. There's, there's no singer in Israel that is above the age of 50 or 60 that was not part of also the, 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 uh, the Israeli military, they have that uh, different band. So everything, if, if your CV said that you did not, did not serve in the military, you would not get a job. It was a very, very important uh, part of Israeli society. And it still is a very important uh, um, uh, part of, of Israeli society. But at the same time, its place in society has changed. Um, it's the proportion that Israel spends on security used to be about 30% in the 1970s, 30% uh, of the GDP. Today it's about 5%. So there's a huge change in, in, in the place of security uh, in Israeli society. Um, part of it, part of this big change of, of the place of the military in Israeli society has to do with these new wars. Um, because in these new wars, first of all, you do not fear for your existence anymore. You're fighting terrorism, you're fighting because you feel that you have to protect yourself, you're fighting because um, uh, you cannot accept the fact that people are killed day by day, but as opposed to what Israel used to experience in the first 30 years, it's not fighting for, ex for its existence. And it, besides, some people who believe that Iran is actually targeting Israel to destroy it, nobody thinks that, that Israel is going to be destroyed in the coming uh, uh, years, which was the case in the first 30 years of Israel's existence. So new wars is a different kind of mindset. If the military, as important as it is, if it's not protecting your actual survival, but just protecting you, it's a difference. But there are other components to that. In the first 30 years, you had victories. Since then, this great military that society is backing up and thinks it's, it's, uh, it's very important cannot show real big victories anymore. There used to be very known heroes of the Israeli military. In, in the last 30 years, it's very difficult to have such heroes. Because in new wars, in new wars you don't have these big heroes who did something great and you can look up to and, and then you can tell youngsters who are 18 year old, oh, you want to be like him. It's, 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 it's uh, difficult. It's much um, easier to confront the military when it's not uh, and deal with other aspects of it besides securing Israel. So a lot of the discourse inside Israeli society today is not about how well the military did in this war or how well did it defend Israel, but it's about how much money it spends, about sexual harassment inside the military, about the fact that women have to be uh, in every role in the military as much as men. The focus is no longer, as it used to be, on the core issues of what the military does, and that is fight, defend Israel. It's about other aspects of, of the military. So that has changed the way Israeli society um, looks, thinks, and appreciates its military. Um, but at the same time, 
as I said before, there's still, there's much more criticism uh, towards the military, but still a wish to see the military winning the war while knowing it will never actually happen. And the very last thing I want to uh, show you is, is a short clip uh, that at least two of you who are my students uh, already saw before um, <coughs> in the last semester, which shows you how Israeli satire show presents the military today. And this is something that was, um, I think, you, you cannot imagine something like this, um, um, I don't know, 30, 40 years uh, ago. Uh, this will never be a, a, a way that, that um, uh, of how uh, the Israeli military is represented. Uh, just as a, a short background, as I said, part of the discussions in Israel is about how much money is spent on the military, um, and specifically about the fact that the officers in the Israeli military, uh, if you become a professional uh, military uh, personnel, that means that you serve not the two, three years that everyone has to serve, but you continue, and then you retire at the age of 40, and you get money from the military as um, pension. pension from the age of 40 till you're 70, and, so, and then you go to another job, so you have a new job, but at the same time, uh, um, you're still getting the pension for, uh, from the military. And I want to show you a short clip. I'll have to translate it. I, I, I'll do my best. Hebrew speakers can help me. Uh, this is a Saturday show in Israel, which is a kind of a Saturday, Saturday Night Live. But it gets much more, much more rating. Uh, because uh, there's one big channel in Israel, Channel 2. So um, this is a big thing. And uh, I, had, I did some work with the Israel Defense Force. This um, this video clip, this satire, this, um, uh, satire show, the amount of discussions by the very top officers in Israel about what we're going to see, about the three minutes that we're going to see here, um, I cannot explain to you how much that was a discussion inside the Israeli military, because they understood that this is a way of how Israeli society now looks at its own military. And as I claim, it's just, I think, I mean, a crucial part of it is because of the new wars and the inability to, to, to win them. Uh, they're making a mock of, 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 uh, of a press conference with the, with the head of the, of the budget and um, of the, of, let's say, of a unit that they made up of, of, of budget and uh, fixing the budget unit in, in the Israeli defense force. That's what it is. They're saying, how can it be that we said that we're going to cut the budget of the military so much, and it ended up where we're giving them five billion more dollars? In the last few months, we're working very hard in order to cut, to cut, to cut the budget of the idea. I will uh, show you the, the big things that we're going to do as part of this plan. Now, of course, the guy that's supposed to, to uh, symbolize the military is very fat, he cannot move himself, because that's how the idea is shown. This is the budget of the idea. 3% is going to the people who actually fight. 96% is going to uh, salaries of people who, are, who have retired. And 1% goes to cookies. <laughs> Where can we cut? Of course, we cannot touch the cookie. <laughs> says only if you put them in tea, it's very good. <laughs> of course, we cannot touch the 
salaries of great guys like this guy. That do such great work for ten thousand dollars a month. <laughs> and he says it's not salary; it's making a joke. And he says it's very important to, to, to that people like this remain in the in the Israeli defense force. And he says, you know, if I go out, they'll grab me. I have so many offers outside. Yeah. <laughs> so, in the we found a place where we can really uh, uh, cut some of the budget. Every year, the IDF invests hundreds of shekels, hundreds of dollars, uh, in order to find paint to paint the trees in white. That's true, by the way. I don't know why, but in Israel, um, uh, they, they do put uh, um, white paint on, on the trees. This will stop. <laughs> the party's over. Instead of that, we're now making um, new trees that will grow white, uh, that they will grow white, and we're. Uh, we'll need 40 million dollars in order to understand how we can convince them to grow white. <laughs> Another very big cut that we'll make is in uh, plugs for ears that soldiers use when they're um, practicing. Each one of them costs uh, a quarter. <laughs> the soldiers, they're so happy with themselves that they use two for both ears. We'll stop that. Instead of that, every soldier will get an iPod. How can it be that you said that you're going to cut the budget? And then you get billions of dollars more. It doesn't fit you? Come and you protect us. Take the weapon. Take it and you guard us. He says, maybe we can cut some of the budget somewhere. Uh, we can cut, but then you can also throw a blanket on the, uh, on the fireplace, because everyone's going to die anyway. So go, go and do that. <laughs> Let's calm down. You know that things around us are changing. Uh, Iranian nuclear uh, uh, plant is under um, uh, we're, is, is manageable. Uh, all the enemies around us are fighting each other. We don't really need. You know what they say? You know what they say? Sometimes your friends are um, bigger enemies than your enemies. What will they do if Australia will uh, attack us? Oh. Are you waiting for for uh, for suicide koalas to come to our streets? <laughs> I didn't think about that. We hear about a lot of, of, of budgets that's, uh, that are for, for um, people in the military that, that don't really need so much uh, uh, um, soldiers. And now they're going to show one day of an officer in Israel. Remember, this is the idea. The most, you know, the, the thing, that, the, the institute that Israelis look up to. And now they're going to show how a day of a, an officer looks like. Uh, 
I come at 8 o'clock, I go to sleep at 8.02. 8.40, yeah. I uh, break the record in Candy Crash. Candy Crash! Asia! Nine, I, I break the record in sleeping in a backpack, in a, ba in a sleeping bag. Ten forty, I yell at the ice cream. He yells at him, "You're you're my soldier, not the other guy's soldier." Ten fifty, I harass a, a soldier. Twelve twenty, I. Uh, Put this picture on the wall. Twelve thirty, I play with myself a kind of a game of mine. I, I buy a penguin. Uh, I, and then I have time to think. If God created everything, then who created God? At one o'clock we have a very important meeting. Uh, where are we going to eat today? Ten, uh, uh, two or ten, I say goodbye to someone who's retiring. He's a kid. This is the secretary saying, I want to remind you that at 3 you have, you have to drink coffee. At 3 at 10 you have to pee on a, a tree. At 3.30 you are supposed to sexually harass me. <laughs> How can I do this all, all of this in half an hour? Okay, I'll take the coffee at three and a half. And uh, we'll do the, the sexual harassment now on the phone. On the telephone. Why, 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 why? Why would you have a great ass? Bye. At uh, 3.35 I steal a lot of, um, how do you call these? Staples. <laughs> Three forty. I sell them. Here's the office. <laughs> 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 five o'clock. I go home. <laughs> five o'clock. I go home. I deserve to, to rest after this hard day. <laughs> guy who you can tell is a real soldier, he's with his backpack, he's just coming back from, he is a real fighter, wants to take, uh, ask him to take him somewhere. Shut up, eh? Mr. Daniel, keep a penguin. Says, I'm sorry, I have a penguin with me. <laughs> okay, if we have time, I'll show you another short clip from the best-selling Israeli film of the last five or more years uh, called uh, Zero Motivation, which also mainly talks about how you don't do anything in the military. Um, so again, all in all, this is, I think, part of the influence of, on these new wars on Israel society and how it looks at the military. And we can discuss other aspects of, of how these new wars uh, influence um, other portions of Israel society, like the Israeli government cannot provide a victory to its citizens. Uh, and that is why Israeli, that is part of the reason that Israelis no longer um, think that the government is able to do that, and war, war after war, there are these slogans say, uh, saying, let the IDF win. It's not the government that will win, they're not able to give the policy, the right policies, the IDF can win, but also, but you can see also how the IDF does uh, um, So that's it, let's, if, uh, tell me if you have questions or anything, or comments. Yeah? Um, so in regards to Israeli society, uh, what I'm curious about is, in light of the sort of recent new normal where it's a static a day, are Israelis starting to think that the, like, the wars are coming back home in the sense that the conflicts they've been instigating either in the West Bank or abroad are now starting to come back to them, or they distinguish between that and the operations and wars and the involvement? No, part of it is it's not new. In the well, in the 1990s, it was buses exploding in the center of cities of Israel. Um, in the Second Lebanon War, it was rockets shot that reached all, uh, 
that reached the northern part of Israel. In the last wars in Gaza, it was the southern part of Israel. But part of new wars is the acceptance of the, uh, not, ex not happily accepting that, but understanding that these are what new wars are, are about. It's stabbing on the streets, it's about the buses exploding, it's missiles coming, but it's, but it's in your cities. It's not, no longer a battlefield that used to be somewhere out there. And you're going to win this over. It's not that if you conquer more land, that will stop m m missiles from coming to your, ho to your homes. So there's no way to win it. Yeah. So the consequence of that uh, seems to be that society becomes more paranoid, more uh, uncertain, um, looks for more ways to try to control the, the world, to try to control people around them, not just in Israel, but in the United States also. You're hearing it from our the candidates running for, for president, saying that we have to keep people out. We have to uh, be. Uh, we have to. We're even willing to give up some of our civil liberties in order to try to to keep keep uh, in control of what's going on. So on the one hand, you can have people who are satirizing the military, but on the other hand, you have another movement going on in the country, you know, of, uh, uh, which is an anti-democratic movement, not just in Israel but here also. I, I agree. That, that's the thing. It's happened, and, and that's what I find interesting. It happens simultaneously. <coughs> and understanding that this is something that there's no way to act, but then trying to act towards it by knowing that it, it won't work. I mean, I, I think you're referring to, to, to Donald Trump and others saying, uh, ban Muslims from coming over. Do they think that would work? I don't think that, they, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't be the, uh, I don't know what Donald Trump wants. Okay, um, but, but I, do they think that's a policy that will work? I don't think so, but it, it, at the same time, you understand it won't work, and you're trying to do it, because you cannot accept the fact that you don't have the tools to deal with. I agree. Yeah? So, do you think, like, new war, is this the future of warfare? Or is it just something that's sort of happening in the Middle East because of the turbulent society? I hope it's the past and not the future. <laughs> it's very, it, it's something that is very uh, difficult to accept. But if you look uh, the last 20, 30 years, this is most of what the world is, the wars in the world, mm -hmm. this is what they look like more and more. Um, I, I, this will also probably be uh, the future, you know, I hope that there will be a different future and we'll find a way not to have wars. Uh, but as it looks now, this is, uh, this is something that will probably continue. Yeah. Uh, it, it, you know, as, look, look at what's happening today around the world. Um, it's either coalitions fighting terrorists or, or a country fighting, uh, 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 fighting um, some rebels. It's, that is mostly what we see. And it's very difficult to, to win this war without having anything to, to end them. Yeah? Do you think the wars are reoccurring because of the Islamic uh, laws that encourage wars against the Jews? Do you think that's like repeating itself over and over again? In Israel? Um, no, I think the basic, my, my, my personal perspective of the, of the wars uh, in Israel is that uh, we're today in a situation in which neither the Israeli government nor the Palestinian government are able to reach a deal to, fi to finalize the, uh, the, um, the conflict between them. Um, they're not strong enough leaders that are able to do that, or they're leaders that, that are not willing to do the sacrifice that is needed as part of it, and that's why uh, uh, the war continues. I don't think, I don't see it as something that's a must, and I don't, th I don't think, specifically the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, I don't think it has to do with Islam versus uh, Judaism. I think it has to do with the fact that Palestinians want uh, uh, their own state in the West Bank and Gaza, and Israel uh, willing to give them that state, but not in the circumstances that they are willing to accept, and the current leadership in Israel and in Palestine not being able to deliver that. Um, there, there are other uh, um, terror groups, uh, some of them, um, or, or, uh, but, but that doesn't, you know, ISIS and all that doesn't have to do anything with Israel. The Palestinian Israel conflict is something different, is ISIS. Yeah? Another thing to have thought of um, is uh, I heard this a lot of my parents growing up, and this is sort of a line that the Jabotinsky has to say a lot, is that. Uh, the Arabs can afford to lose 10 wars, Israel can't afford to lose one, 
Is this still a mentality that exists amongst the IDF, or is that sort of waned in the years, realizing that the IDF is one of the more sophisticated militaries in the entire region? Um, it is some, still something that is like in the mindset of Israelis and the IDF, but these new wars, as opposed to the wars that uh, you describe in your parents, are not the same kind of wars. First of all, they're operations, they're not wars. <laughs> and, and second of all, um, they're, they're not threatening the, the existence of Israel. They're, they're, they're threatening your quality of life. They're threatening your, sometimes your, your living in Israel and being, uh, I don't know, 20 years ago, living in Israel and, not, and being afraid to go on a bus because it might explode, it completely changes how you look at reality. But it's different from the times that you were fighting the military, or militaries, all the Arab countries more, more or less combined, that actually doesn't accept your existence. So in that, I think the, there's, a, there's a, a, a difference. And the Israel study is completely sure that if something like that will happen, the idea is strong enough, sophisticated enough, good enough to protect it, that it will not be destroyed. But there's a question of how it uses its money on the day-to-day -day basis when you see the new wars are ongoing, terrorism is ongoing, and there's no real way to fight it. Or there is a way to stop it, not to stop it, but uh, to make sure it's less than before, but you cannot totally stop it, and there's no real way to, to complete it. Yeah. I, yeah, I think you raised a lot of interesting, you know, uh, questions and has a great insights. Um, it seems, I, I mean, I also kind of reach an inclusion with a lot of these wars you can't, neither side can politically win or militarily win often, at least by traditional me measures. Yet you have, you know, uh, we're both for the establishment of a Palestinian state that's completely different than ISIS or Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. The ends are different. But some of the other dilemmas of the wars are similar. So the United States first said it was going to defeat the Taliban, then we went back and said, no, we can't defeat them. We will contain them in some way. Then we started, we'll contain ISIS. No, we're going to destroy ISIS, right? But you have some elements on the Israeli right and some elements within Hamas that think that military defeat for their side is possible, while many recognize um, that, it's, that it's no longer possible. You have many in the US and Afghanistan kind of situation recognizing that military defeat is not possible. But what are the new ways of measuring success, right? Because a lot of debate within this country and within Israel, I'm sure within the Palestinian community as well, is how do you measure success, right? So it seems like often part of the Israeli conversation is having two years of relative quiet. So what is success? It's not, it's delaying, right, when the next war will be. So instead of it being ongoing, you have a couple of years reprieve where uh, people don't feel like their lives are in danger, right? So how is success, is success, or how is success recalibrated? And then the second, sorry, because there's yeah. many questions. One of the second is, you know, what dilemmas does this raise in terms of how you fight, right, these kinds of wars, right? Because one of the definitions of a base of war is that one side um, clearly uh, does not intend to and do, does not follow international law. Right? And that is part of what the definition of asymmetric war is in terms of how you fight. Right? And then the other side is sucked into a situation where international law is not part of the conversation, yet they still um, is conversation or have obligations to abide by international law. So how, um, you know, we talked about the ends of war being redefined, but how are the means of war? Um, yeah, I, 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 first of all, how do you measure success? Right. Um, you're right. In Israeli society today, the way to measure success is how much time go, how much time uh, um, is between one war and the next war, and this is again part of the problem. The only war that almost all Israelis agreed upon that was a war that we, that Israel almost lost, if not actually lost, was the Second Lebanon War. After that war, for nine years, it's relatively quiet, and in the last few years. There are discussions about, wait, we thought that was a complete failure. That was the best war, sorry to use, it's hard to say best with war, but that was the best war we had in the last 20, 30 years because we have, we're, it's relatively quiet. So judging it is only retrospectively, and now the heads of the IDF think that that war, nine years ago, will they admitted that it was wrong, the, the chief of staff resigned, the, the minister of defense resigned, the prime minister resigned for different reasons, but part of it was also pressure because of how uh, bad they did in that war. Now it seemed like uh, a, a war that relatively was 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 okay because of 
of the uh, of what happened. And let me tell you this: the next war that's going to be sometime, there will probably be war between Israel and South and Lebanon. And Israel will be hit much harder than before, because everyone knows Israel's intel Israel intelligence. This is what they say: that the amount of missiles that, that Hezbollah have today are far, far, far more than they had in 2006. And then people will say, "Well, that war was not so good." So. Parking, measuring what success is very, very uh, um, uh, difficult. Um, but it is how much time goes from one cycle to another. It is in how many casualties you have. It is in how, how much it interferes your daily life. Uh, things like that. Uh, but it's very hard to, to determine. Uh, that, that is why even when you have the best war that you could, <laughs> let's say you didn't have any, any casualties, um, it almost didn't interfere in your daily life, it's still not actually a success. Because it's, what did you do to the other side? You didn't conquer something. You made their, their lives harder. Uh, maybe you, you, you got some more deterrence, something like that. But you know if you, that it's going to happen again. So, so it, it becomes uh, um, very difficult. What was the second question? The questions in terms of the means of war that arise. Oh, so the means of war, that's another mm -hmm. thing. It used to be, in, in all wars, and this is still how Israel study looks at the Israeli military, by the way. You have to protect us. Do whatever you need. We're not looking for you to be okay with, uh, with the international law. That's, we, 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 you don't need to be moral. You have to protect us. And everything is all, all the means, as Israeli society sees it, uh, everything is okay as long as you're able to protect us. But now, since you can't have this big victory, then things like that are much more looked at. And um, I don't know if it, it, it interests uh, all of you, but the, military, the Israeli idea of the military finds itself in a very um, problematic position, in which it is obligated. Some, it's not all. It doesn't all. It's not always practiced, but it is. Ob, it sees itself as an obligated to international law, <laughs> and it, is, it tries uh, to ha to um, have systems that make sure that it doesn't uh, that it follows international law. Well, Israeli society doesn't accept that. That doesn't doesn't think that the IDF necessarily has to do that as long as it protects it. But the IDF understands the consequences of not obeying international law. So it does obey international law, while the Israeli society doesn't really um, uh, look for that. Um, but it becomes an important part, part of the conversation of, of, of how much uh, uh, do you follow international law, um, how you act, things that in the past were, were not that big of an issue. Because if you're fighting for your survival, then these aspects are, are not as important as they are today. And when it's a question of, of, you know that this is just another, I don't want to say just, I don't want to undermine it and that people are getting killed there. But if it, this is just another cycle and we will have the same thing in five years, then you look at the different aspects of, of how you conduct your war than, than you used to in the past. Okay. I appreciate the fact that for the sake of this kind of presentation, you have to present a very generalized picture, but I would like you to at least go on record as acknowledging that Israeli society is not homogeneous. It's oh. very, very diverse.